So great to be here. First question I have for all of you this morning, everyone needs someone. Who are you there for? Or yet again, who's there for you? One of the things I truly believe in is that everyone should have a mentor. When we think about mentoring, one of the things that our youth needs in this presentation that I just heard before, when we talk about grit, I think that mentoring is the answer for that. Because parents, teachers, they're too close. They need to be, have somebody that they can, someone to believe in them. And so I'm going to take us through this. When I think of passion and momentum, I can't help but think about professional athletes. And I think how professional athletes got there. They have a coach, they have a mentor, and they help bring them to the very tip of their game. And when they're ready to perform, they can perform at the peak of their game. Why? Because there's someone that believes in them. There's someone that's mentored them and helped them. But when I see somebody that has all the passion, momentum, and they don't have a coach or mentor, and they're reaching, and they just can't seem to get there, I can't help but feel, what is it they're missing? What is it? They need that helping hand. They need somebody. They need somebody to believe in them. They need somebody to help them. They need a mentor. They say that no man is an island. You hear it in song. You hear it in poetry. And you read it in novels. They say no man is an island. You hear it in song, you hear it in poetry, and you read it in novels. What is it they're trying to say? What is the message? It's simple. Everyone needs someone. Let's take a look at when a child is born. Here in the United States, Hopefully, most children are born into loving, caring parents. And they care for them through their infant years. And they coddle them. They make things great for them. As they grow older, and they go through those, uh, what do they call it, the terrible twos? And what the, it's the threes. And as they grow older, parents have to become a little more stringent and put guidelines. And as that happens, Kids have a tendency to hold back. And all of a sudden, the parent is no longer that nice person that's there for them. They become the policeman. And the bond begins to break. Or it's not quite the same as it was. But other families aren't quite as lucky. You have so many broken homes, single parenthoods, then you have other things that go on along with families, intellectual disabilities, or some people have poverty. They have so many strifes in life that really have a heavy impact on a child's life. And with that, a child doesn't get a fair shake. And the burden on that child could make it that they never have that bond with their parents. So who do they have? Unfortunately, all too often, when a child doesn't get that bond, they look elsewhere. And too often, there's somebody there that's ready to give it to them, whether through drugs or gangs or any other way. One of the things that I do is I work with the Youth Motivational Task Force, and we go into a lot of low-income areas and you'll be amazed at how many kids are just not even looking to go to high school, to go to finish high school, or to go to college. It's just not in their plans. Why? And what are we doing about it? And the fact is, is if they had a coach or a mentor, they would do something. But as kids are in school, they have that teacher. And yes, there's always that one teacher that most kids have a bond with, but that's short-lived. 
The truth of the matter is, when you have a teacher, you may have that teacher for a year, possibly two, but that bond breaks. Or at least it's an acquaintance in the future. And yes, you do have that one teacher you may know for many, many years. Coaches are quite the same. You play a sport, you have that coach for a few years, and yeah, you have great fun with them. You drive with them, you have great fun. However, when you go to the next year, it changes. Unfortunately, very often, you're forgotten. And then there's the killer, friends. You think you have a lot of friends, and when you're in school, you feel you have a lot of friends. You interact with all different kinds of things you have. But the truth is, especially when you get to like college age, man, everyone goes to a different college. Everyone goes elsewhere. And if you're lucky, you have one true friend. There's a lot of truth in that statement. So what do you have? And there, that true statement is so true. In the end of life, if you can say that you have one true friend, you're lucky. So is, who is it that you have to back you? It's a very solemn question. And I'm not here to sadden you. I'm here to pep you up. Because if you have a mentor, if you have that one person to really help you, it can make a huge difference. In the previous presentation, we heard about grit. And grit, very often for me, what grit is, is having someone, someone that I can lean back on, someone that I can speak to and not have to worry about what I say, not have to worry about what I feel. And some of the challenges I feel that people have, I'm going to give you a lifestyle or life lesson from a child's perspective. I'm going to give you a, a life perspective of one young child. i just show you how sad it can get. There was this child called Chris. And when he was growing up, he was living in a family who had an intellectually challenged child who was two years older than he. And when he went to school, he was in the same grade as his sister, who was held back because of her problems. And because of that, there were many things that happened. For one, the medical problems caused enormous debt in the family. So both parents had to work two, three jobs. With that, Chris never got to see his parents very much. Number two, in a school, the school looked to Chris to be able to solve any problems that his sister would have. And so Chris had to deal with a lot of problems. And there were a lot of problems. Often there was things like someone would say, hey, who's the retard? What would Chris do? He would use this. He would use this, and that would get him in a lot of trouble. Time and time this would happen. And as he got older, the consequences for that got deeper and deeper. Then one year, when he was in high school, they were at Sadie Hawkins dance, where a young man asked Chris's sister to dance. They had a great dance. And when the dance was over, the boy was teased and taunted by a number of the other boys. And he was called, hey, you dance with the village idiot. Unbeknownst to them, Chris was standing right behind them. And with that, Chris just boiled over. His anger just got to him. He just couldn't take it anymore. He pounced. Police officer knew the boy and said, Chris, I'm going to take you aside and let's talk about this. Chris could have been taken to jail. And that wasn't the first time. And the officer took him in the car and drove him around for a few hours, and he tried to calm him. And then at one point, the officer got out of the car and took Chris to the side and said, Chris, this has got to stop. He 
He says, you can't help it that your sister is intellectually challenged. With that, Chris took this and he smacked the officer right in the face. Once again, Chris found himself on the ground, but this time with cuffs on his back. And the officer turned to him and said, Chris, I want you to know something. I'm only doing this because I believe in you. I believe in you. Four words. Four words that make a difference. That man became Chris's mentor. With that, Chris never used this again. And with that, Chris changed. He changed his education. He changed his, everything he did in life. He changed. He became a coach. He became a friend. He's coached for over 25 years and he believes in other people. I can't tell you enough when I look at the last video about grit you need to have a mentor. And I'll prove it to you in other ways, too. There's been a study done about mentorship and the kids of challenge and high risk. And if you take a look, you see that 76% of children at risk who have a mentor attend and go to college and are likely to succeed and finish with a degree. The proof is all there. So what does a mentor do? A mentor creates a relationship with that person. They make sure that they are able to talk to each other without having the, the, the relationship of having someone telling people what to do, to discuss. It's not like a parent relationship. And that's what's so beautiful about it. Because they interact together and they feel free, but they have to agree on the timing and when they can do it. And they have to be able to agree that they can have differences. You don't have to always accept what the mentor has to say. You can discuss it. But that's the beauty of it. It's not like it being the parent. Or, and you can never fail. Isn't that beautiful? You can never fail. I always have, a, I have this little box that I have on, my, on the side of my desk. It says, what would you achieve if you never you knew you would never fail? Just think of that for a moment. What would you achieve if you knew you would never fail? And then the second part of that is, what's stopping you? So I suggest for every one of you, get a mentor. And when we think of the corporations today, there are so many studies about where companies are today. More and more companies all over are taking on mentorships. The, it's a proven point now that the Fortune 500 has so many mentors Every year, it, the number increases over and over and over. Why? Because it works. Fortune 500, it's a proven thing. So what's my message? Simple. Have a mentor. Together, we can make it work. So I have a challenge to you, each and every one of you. I ask you, help somebody, make a difference. And when you leave here today, I want one thing for you to ask yourself. Who are you there for? Or who's there for you? Thank you.